Hi, thank you for joining me today. Uh, in this video, as with the previous few videos on this channel, I'm going to present you with a paragraph written in English. Uh, within this paragraph, I'm going to, I'm sorry, let me rephrase. I'm going to read the paragraph aloud to you, and hopefully you will follow along with me. Of course, it is on the screen, and it will soon be made larger so that you can read it. Um, keep in mind that in the paragraph I'm reading, there are going to be multiple errors, uh, some related to syntax, grammar, spelling, and punctuation. It's your job to apply what you know and, of course, what you've learned um, in terms of English as a language to correct the mistakes within the paragraph that I'm reading aloud to you. Uh, forgive me if I stumble when I read it because there are errors and so my brain is quickly trying to correct them as I'm reading it without first just reading it. So anywho, that being said, uh, once I've read the paragraph aloud to you, I will ask you to pause the video. It will again be enlarged and I'm going to have you read the paragraph to yourself. Again, reread it. Uh, from there, I would like for you to use a tool like a notebook or a paper or whatever you have available to make your corrections and to resume the video as soon as you believe you found all of the corrections within the paragraph or that were available. Uh, and then we'll correct it together. Hopefully my corrections align with yours. Uh, of course, if they don't, or if you would like to challenge some of what I've come up with, you're welcome to use the question or excuse me, the comment section of the video below. Uh, other than that, we're going to go ahead and get started. Let's go ahead and I will read the paragraph aloud to you. <clears throat> All right. Chicle-based gum was first manufactured as a result of a failed experiment. Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, the Mexican general whose army defeated the Texans at the Alamo in 1836, brought chicle to New York in 1860. He hoped to sell it as a type of rubber. A man named Thomas Adams tried to make this rubber harden, but he failed. Discovering instead that the rubber could be chewed, Adams added adds flavorings. He began to make gum with a chicle base. Okay, please pause the video, read it to yourself, and then of course make those corrections before resuming, and we will correct it together. All right, let's go ahead and begin our corrections. All right, so starting at the beginning, of course, you want to start with the capital um, chicle base skin, which of course it is here. So chicle-based gum was first manufactured for, or as a result of a failed experiment. Antonio Lopez de Santa, blah, blah, blah. And I say blah, 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 because what's happening is it's, tra excuse me, the first clause, which is chicle-based gum was first manufactured as a result of a failed experiment, should have a full stop to conclude it, because the next clause, which begins as Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, the Mexican general, and so on and so forth, um, is a separate idea than the one that was initially presented at the beginning of this, uh, the paragraph. In other words, you've got one clause semi-unrelated to the next one, which means to separate them in this case, we want to use what I said as a full stop, which really means you end with a period. All right, now let's go ahead and start what is a separate clause, which begins with Antonio Lopez, which is a proper noun. Keep in mind all proper nouns, which are the names of people, places, or things, need to be capitalized. Antonio Lopez de, and in Spanish, de is not capitalized. It means of. So Antonio Lopez de of Santa Ana, the Mexican, which is lowercase in this case, but it's the name of a nationality, the Mexican general whose army defeated the Texans, which is the name of the people who originate from or inhabit the state of Texas, therefore proper noun. Uh, Texans at the Alamo, proper noun, it's the name of a location, a fort, the Alamo, in 1836. But let's go back and reread it at the start of the second clause. Uh, Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, pause. This is where we are introducing some additional insights into whoever Antonio uh, Lopez de Santa Ana is. And in this case, he's a Mexican general. Well, generally speaking, what we do when we're introducing these uh, tidbits or these insights or in some cases a modification, is you'll do so using uh, commas to separate them from within the clause, right? So Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, pause, the Mexican general whose army defeated the Texans in the Alamo in 1836, that's the end of that tid tidbit is what I call it, but it just means uh, like a factoid or a little bit of info, again, into whoever this person is. But you'll notice that Replacing the period that was there initially with the comma means the next part of the sentence should not begin with the capital. That's reserved for proper nouns and, of course, 
the start of a new sentence, which in this case, I'm not starting a new sentence. I'm just finishing up my clause. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring down that capital into a lowercase. So brought Chicle to New York, proper noun, name of a state, to New York in 1860 period. Fine. Next sentence begins with a capital. He hoped to sell it as a type of rubber. A man named Tom. And you notice again, we have the same problem that we did above in which you have two separate clauses, uh, neither of which are separated from one another which means I need to go in and find out where to separate one clause from the other. So let's see which one is a complete idea or complete thought. Uh, let's go back. He hoped to sell it as a type of rubber. There's your complete idea. I'm gonna end it with a period. All right, a man named Thomas Adams. So starting a new sentence, the article A in this case needs to be capitalized. A man named Thomas Adams, again, a name, therefore proper noun, capital. Uh, tried, and when you're adding a suffix to words ending with a Y, you want to remember to drop the letter Y and replace it with an I before appending or before adding your suffix. So tried to make this rubber hardened. And we're gonna keep rubber in quotes because it's the uh, author's intention to highlight this word or to separate it um, from its intended meaning, right? It's got an additional meaning or a meaning beyond that which was originally meant. So hardened comma, but he failed. Okay, period. Next sentence begins with a capital, discovering instead that the rubber could be chewed, Adams added flavorings, or adds, it says, but it should be added. In this case, discovering instead that the rubber could be chewed, pause, Adams adds, means he's, uh, it's present continuous, like he's doing it now, but it's something that he's already done. Therefore, it's past tense and it is a non-irregular verb. So we're gonna go ahead and just add ed to the end of it. Adams added flavorings, period. All right, next sentence begins with a pronoun he, which is lowercase, I'm gonna capitalize it. He began to made gum, incorrect tense. We're gonna go ahead and change that to make for the verb. Gum with a chicle base. And of course, we wanna end that sentence with a period. Okie dokie, hopefully this saved, yes, 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 oh, perfect, okay. Uh, if you found this video helpful, I'm glad. Um, I hope that you will continue to be a part of this channel, uh, which means, of course, if you haven't subscribed, I would appreciate you doing so. If you found it helpful, please like the video. Um, I'm going to continue to produce content related to applying some of what you're learning um, as you develop an understanding of English uh, into practices such as these and otherwise, um, and others as well. And of course, there are also many lessons that will come with them uh, to provide additional insights into the language, whether it's grammar or spelling rules or, you know, anything related to those. Okay, thank you again, and uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing you in the next one. All right, bye.